The Toyota Corolla has sold over 50 million cars, and now they've decided to make the Corolla Cross, which is an SUV. Now this is slotted just below the RAV4, which is a really popular vehicle. It's just a little shorter, a little lower, and a little more ground clearance than the one previous to it, which is the CHR. But this vehicle really offers a lot of value into a certain segment. And I know you're saying to yourself, do we need another SUV? Well, this one might surprise you. Stay right with us. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix, and this is the 2022 Toyota Corolla Cross. Yes, it is a Corolla in an SUV package because SUVs are becoming more and more popular. Why sedans? Not so much unless you're looking at sporty sedans. It's a whole nother category. And so Toyota thought, you know what? We could take a third of our Corolla car sales and convert them into SUV sales because people are using their vehicles in a different way than they have in the past. And that is very smart. We're gonna go through this vehicle in 10 different categories so that you can compare it to its competitors, which are listed down in the description below. Because on our channel, we do more than just car reviews and first looks of new vehicles. We also give you car smarts because we don't want you to pay retail. So don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything. Let's get started with why this is different, its competitors, and by the way, this is built in the USA. We'll talk about that in quality, so you want to wait to the end. We'll talk about all the value, pricing, and so forth, so you know what you're talking about before you walk in the dealer. So let's get started with Under the Hood. Under the Hood of all Corolla Crosses is a two-liter engine that has 169 horsepower and 150 pound-feet of torque. It is a direct shift CVT, and it can tow up to 1,500 pounds. Now, there is a hybrid option coming in 2020. We don't have much details, but I can tell you the fuel economy on this vehicle is 32 miles to the gallon combined on the front wheel drive, 30 miles to the gallon combined on the all wheel drive. So let's get started with the performance part of this vehicle. This is kind of an anemic motor. You can hear it struggling a little bit. Kind of wish it was like a little bit of a turbo or something to give it a little extra punch. But one thing it does have going for it is when you're at 60 miles an hour, which I am in 70 mile hour zone i can put my foot on it and it goes so it's fine for passing at mid to higher speeds but getting off the line is a little bit on the slow side so i did suggest to the engineers geez it'd be nice if they had like a performance edition i think the hybrid's going to be faster we won't know that till next year but right now i think this is a little slow if you're driving it around town like in the city all the time you're probably not going to even notice the difference but one of the things you do notice right away is getting off the line it is on the slow side but overall for performance based on the other cars in this category for performance it earns a seven so you're looking at the handling of this vehicle it's really connected to the roadway now i'm currently driving the xle we did show you originally the LE and there's an L, but there's different wheel sizes. So it's 17 inch steel wheels on the L, 17 inch alloy wheels on the LE, and this is the XLE, which is 18 inch. Now, one of the things that this does have is it comes front wheel drive, which is the current edition we're running now. I was driving the all wheel drive. It's available on all three trim levels. It's an extra $1,300. So if you live in the upper half of the country and you experience lovely snow like I do in my hometown, I'm currently in Austin, Texas. So this is not snowy country. So you don't need it. So get the front wheel drive if you're in the lower half of the country. So one of the things that I wanted to go over with you is this is a global platform. I did talk about that when I was talking about design. So when you get to that portion, you'll get to see. And you can see that the, this is a really well-balanced vehicle. I mean, if you've driven a Corolla, you're gonna be getting that same type of feeling that you know you've got a pretty confident car. You're certainly not gonna feel that uh, you're not getting good contact with the road and that you are and the brakes work and the handling is exactly as you'd expect. The all wheel drive system on this vehicle can transfer torque between 10 to 50% to the rear. What that really means in the all wheel drive platform is you have the ability to get better traction. And that is good if you're driving in snow and ice and icky weather like the northern half of the country does. But this is something that I think they did a really good job. They did an excellent job on thinking about who's using this car in an all wheel drive platform. It handles really well. Brakes are good, connection to the road is good. The handling is nice and specific. So for handling, it earns a nine. Now safety is a very important part of any vehicle. 
And one thing Toyota did, and I think is very smart, is they have the Toyota Safety Sense 2. It is everything that you would need from safety that's included. Now, when you get the XLE, you get the few extra features, which would be an intervention of rear cross traffic alert, you're backing out of a spot, and it will stop the vehicle so you don't hit something. It also has the backup camera, so if you're back, if you don't hit a pole or a concrete wall or whatever, and I've seen that happen. So just because the warning's there doesn't mean it intervenes. In the XLE, it does have that intervention. Now, one thing that's important to note is forward collision warning, lane change departure, rear cross traffic alert, and it goes on and on and on, is all standard. Now, not every vehicle in this category does that. Some of the competitors charge up for that. And then you start wanting that safety, but then realizing it's not so great of a deal. Now, Honda's been doing that for a while, Toyota's been doing that for a while, and the reason they do it is they want you to be safe on the road. Very smart that it's all included as standard because this is a lot of new drivers, uh, inexperienced drivers driving these vehicles, and they have a safer vehicle. So if you're looking for a car for a new driver, this might be a good choice. I know it's a new car, but you're always better off giving them all those safety features, all those nannies that personally I shut off, but a lot of people like them. But overall, when you're looking at safety for this vehicle, I was really impressed that it was all standard and it earns a 10. When it comes to visibility, it is a part of safety. And looking out the front, you have a huge piece of glass. Remember that 80% of your driving decisions are based on visibility, and this really helps. And the slope of the hood helps you see the roadway. I'm not telling you to look right in front of you when you're driving, but it's nice to see what's going on around you. The key is to look as far ahead as possible. Now, looking out the side, you've got a pretty high sill here, and that's okay. But looking out the back is where it's critical. And if you look out the back, you can see there are headrests and they are far spaced apart. And when you put the vehicle in reverse, you get a backup camera. There is no around view camera available. I will tell you, it is kind of a grainy camera. I'm surprised. They should have a better, clearer camera. I think that's really important. But when you're looking at visibility as a whole, looking out the front, of course, you get your rear view mirror and your side view mirrors, which are really big size and nice and helps you see what's going on around you. For visibility, this vehicle earns a seven. When it comes to seating, there are some important factors because this is the most important seat in the house, starting with adjustable height seat belts. This is good so the seatbelt doesn't cut your neck. Everybody's built differently and you want to make sure that you're comfortable. Now, in the L and the LE, it is a manual seat. Now, there is an optional 10-way power seat on the driver's side with lumbar, and it's only two-way lumbar, so it's in and out. So depending upon how you're built, it may or may not hit the small of your back. That's, of course, something you should always sit in the driver's seat. Now, on the passenger side, there's nothing literally. There is no adjustments other than manual. And that's kind of disappointing. But the driver's seat is important. But if you're switching drivers when you're driving, you don't want that passenger to be uncomfortable. Let's take a look at the second row and we'll give it a rating. Getting into the second row, you'll find that there is good knee room. Now I've got the seat set for me on 5'8 on all legs. So that's important. Now when it comes to height, there's a little divot in the roof area here. And that's good because if you're tall, you can get that torso height in there as well. Good shoulder room, easy to sit two adults back here without any problem. There is one pocket behind the, the passenger seat. Behind the center console are two vents, a USB and a USB-C port. So there's quite a bit of charging. You've got wireless charging up front, like we talked about. And, and so these are things that you want. Now, in addition, there is a center console here. It has two cup holders and it's a 60-40 split seat and we'll cover that in cargo as well. So you wanna stay for that. Love the interior colors really cool choices. Uh, they've got a grip here to get out on all four corners. So it's good if you need to lift yourself out. I think that's really nice these days. There's a cup holder in the door. No additional storage. There is an area here for the door grip. I don't recommend putting things there, but kids will. But overall, when you're looking at seating for this vehicle, they've done a nice job. It is extremely spacious in here. Unfortunately, the passenger seat has no adjustments whatsoever. The driver's seat only gets power and lumbar when you go to the top trim level. And for seating, it earns a seven. When you're looking at technology, standard is a seven inch screen and then the higher trim levels, you get the eight inch screen. So this is the XLE with an eight inch screen. So you can see you hit the home button and you get the time and the music, however you wanna set that up. You can go into menus and you've got your audio, which is a JBL audio system. In this case, it's an optional JBL audio system. And when you hit audio, 
you will get different sources, which includes AM, FM, satellite radio, USB, and a Bluetooth. In addition, you can hit your presets, your satellite XM replay, your station list, your options, and of course you can set your sound however you'd like. This is pretty basic when it comes to audio systems, and it's something that people want, and a lot of the people end up using your phone. So you got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto available to you. You got your phone for your Bluetooth connection. I, right now I don't have mine connected. In addition, there are apps, which includes the remote connected, as well as notifications and a Wi-Fi hotspot, which is becoming pretty standard on a lot of these vehicles. Projection is part of the connection between your phone and your computer. Again, this requires a USB connection, so you get your information. And then you can go into your setup and you can make all the adjustments to make this very personal. So for the map, you use your Apple CarPlay or your Android Auto. There is no navigation app installed in this particular trim level. All the rest of your settings are here. You've got a manual control and a menu power volume button right here, which I do appreciate. When you're looking at the technology for the gauges that are in front of you, they're standard gauges when it comes to the L and the LE trim level. On the XLE, which is what we're looking at, you can see they are lit digital gauges in the center and on the ends they are actual gauges and that is something that people want and of course it's part of what is available. There is a button on the left side of the steering wheel you can press and get different information to change what you want including fuel economy and adjusting those safety features as you wish and those are easily reachable from the steering wheel. When you're looking at technology overall it's pretty basic I'm surprised that there's not a navigation map built in, but everything works as stated. And in this category, there's a lot of competition. And the Koreans with Kia and Hyundai really have that interface down at a much higher rate and quicker response and more clarity. So for that and technology, this vehicle earns a seven. When you're looking at features for this vehicle, you go to the left side of the steering wheel and that's that button I was using to adjust the screen in front of you. This allows you to go back and your phone connection and volume are right here and that's for your voice controls. On the right side of the steering wheel, you've got some of your safety features, your lane change departure, your forward collision warning, your cruise control and your different modes here and that's for changing the audio station. Very simple, easy to use. Then you've got your stocks on the right, very easy for your wiper blades. Going to the left, you have your turn signal and your headlights. In front of you, we talked about these gauges. All the information that you would need is right there and the ability to shut off that auto off, which is right about there. And I am one that likes to shut it off because I think you only save about a tablespoon of fuel. On the left side, there is a vent going further down and this beautiful two-tone interior. You've got the ability to adjust the lighting, your trunk and your automatic headlights. On the door, there's no memory seating, but there is window lifts of course and your locks and your mirror adjustments more storage down in the door well one thing to note this is hard plastic kind of wish it was soft this is soft this is not kind of disappointing because it looks like real stitching but it's not it's just a picture of stitching heading over to the center more plastic hard plastic i know what do you expect for a car in this price point but it has a beautiful eight inch screen which i do like below that you've got your vents your climate control, and it only comes two zone climate control, which means a control for the passenger and a control for the driver, and that's only on the top trim level. Going further down, you've got another connection. In this case, it's USB and wireless charging, which is right down here, as well as a 12 volt outlet, and you've got two stage heated seats. In front of the shifter, you've got your trash control and that auto off button. I hate that start stop technology. In front of the shifter you've got the start stop technology and the ability to shut off the traction control. I don't know why I'd need that necessarily but this button I would be pressing every time I start the car. Further back you have your standard shifter and behind that you've got your parking brake and your auto hold. Two cup holders and then for the center console we have another outlet inside 12 volt outlet and your remote control. Overall, the rear seating is really nice and there is an optional manual sunroof, not in every model. This is in the top trim level. In the overhead console above, you've got your lighting adjustments and your SOS button, which I think is a nice little feature to have just in case there is a problem 
and that sunroof is movable. When it comes to features in this car for this price point and lots of neat things, like in our pre-production car, the ability for this to come out to keep the sun out of your face, really nice, well thought out features. And for this vehicle for features, it earns a nine. When you're looking at the design of this Corolla Cross, you're noticing that this trim around here is black or it comes silver on the higher trim levels. You've got a nice, more beefier grill than what you would have seen on the Corolla. And again, if you haven't seen our Corolla review, I'll make sure to post that right up here. This is all matte black, easy to clean, doesn't show bugs, and that's good, especially if you live in an urban environment. Note that all of the Crosses have LED lighting, and that is good. You'll also notice where the departure from the Corolla goes to the Corolla Cross, and that starts with these fenders. You'll notice that these fenders are more muscular, and you've got wheel arches to make it look more sporty. And again, this is to focus on the category that's buying these vehicles. They believe it's gonna be more of the youth. They want this vehicle so they have one vehicle that does everything they need. As you move your way back, you can see that body line, that trim line, and of course, this more muscular, protective coating here and this is designed to give it again a more muscular look also all the vehicles come with black roof racks this vehicle also has more muscular quarter panels you'll notice that right away then above the c panel that's a for the front pillar this is the b pillar and this is the c pillar it says corolla cross embossed on the higher trim levels it's in chrome just to try to make it look really pretty and sporty because you're going to a more luxury trim level. Again, you can see this, they've done a lot of work to make this look more sporty. As you work your way around the back to these muscular taillights, I laugh when I say muscular because this really isn't a muscular car, but they want it to look more urban, more to the liking of those buyers. You'll see Corolla across here. You've got a high wing here. And of course the LE trim level in this case, this is, we're gonna drive all three trim levels, but this is good to know what trim level we're talking about now and the wiper blade here which i'd love to see tucked up underneath there's a ton of room again that's part of what they can change in the future toyota logo here not too much in your face i really appreciate that going further down you've got the matte black mixed with the body color i think they did a nice job making this vehicle look modern and a little bit edgy not too edgy but enough that you can really see the color of the body mixed with this matte black which they've used throughout in order to give it a more current look now, when you're talking about this vehicle overall, you got LED tail lights and LED driving lights are available on the XLE trim level. So there's a lot of little features as you move up from L to LE to XLE, what you're getting. And again, that all depends on price. And we'll talk about that in just one second. But when you're looking at the design of this vehicle, it's pretty nice. And overall for design, I gave it a nine. When you're looking at the quality of the Toyota Corolla Cross, it's a Toyota. It's gonna to have wonderful quality. We know that. It's built here in the USA in Huntsville, Alabama, and we're happy that it is built here in the USA to give people jobs. When you're looking at the quality of this vehicle, it's a Toyota. So you know you're gonna get top quality and excellent resale value. There's a three year, 36,000 mile warranty, and this vehicle is built here in the USA in Huntsville, Alabama, in a brand new plant that they're sharing with Mazda. Now, what's important to note is when you're looking at the fit, the finish, the colors of the materials, both inside and out, there's a lot of hard plastic on the inside, but the improvement in quality is pretty impressive, especially when you're looking at the competitors in this category. You're looking at Kia and Hyundai and Mazda and a lot of uh, Subaru. So when you're thinking about that versus this vehicle, they've done a really nice job with some premium brands as well. And when you're talking about quality, this vehicle earns a nine. Coming around to the back, you've got 26 cubic feet of storage. That is the largest in this category. And that's impressive. You have 60-40 split seats, which are manual to put up and down. But hey, when you're looking at this price point, this is really a lot of storage. And underneath this cover is a spare tire. And I do appreciate that because a lot of vehicles don't have it these days in order to improve fuel economy. But Toyota was thinking, learn how to change a flat tire. If you don't, it's a skill you should know. And we talk about that in Car Smarts. Also in back are JBL speakers, and they've done a really nice job with this two-tone interior. There are solid colors as well. You gotta pick what works for you. Here's the most important part of this vehicle. It's the value. It starts at $22,100, and for an extra $1,300, you can have all-wheel drive. And I think that's smart, and that's part of that global platform that they've been using, and I think this is really, really smart to utilize something they already have on a global basis, and this is exactly what you're gonna see no matter where you are in the world. 
paint pen where you're watching from. If you purchase the XLE and you load up every single option on it, you're gonna come in about $28,000. That is an impressive value, especially compared to the Koreans who are coming in with Hyundais and Kias, and they're trying to lowball the price as well. But for you as a consumer, you have to look at what the resale value is going to be. What's the residual if you're leasing this vehicle or if you're buying it, it has to hold up. Hyundai and Kia do that as well. Although there is a shorter warranty, this vehicle really offers a lot of features and value for this vehicle. And for value in this category, the Toyota Corolla Cross earns a 10. Now there are some pluses and minuses. I wish it had a little bit more horsepower. Maybe a turbocharger on this would help, but it just seems like it's lacking and it needs just a little bit more oomph. Now again, that's a personal choice. You might be totally fine if you're driving this in the city. It may be more power than you need. There are some hard plastic interior parts, but overall, that's the only negatives I can come up with. This vehicle really offers a ton of value, a ton of space, and a lot of features. On the plus side, you've got all the safety features standard. All of them, no extras, super smart of Toyota when they add that Safety Sense 2.0 in. That's every single thing that you want, the cross traffic alert. Now remember, the automatic intervention comes only in the XLE trim level. So, but you do get cross traffic alert. You have a backup camera. There's a lot of things that people want. I'm disappointed in the seating, but overall it's not that bad considering this price point. But Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Amazon included, the Alexa, people are using that. They want their cars connected. They want a key fob to unlock and lock their car. Yes, I know it's not auto start, but you're looking at a price point of under $28,000 on average for these vehicles. So when you're looking at this vehicle overall, it has a value score of 10, but when you add in all of the pluses and minuses and you look at what this vehicle offers, they think they're gonna sell 100,000 of these. I say they're gonna sell a lot more of these. I'm starting to think that they're gonna start transitioning what was a popular sedan and making a lot less of those and making a lot more of these. We have a hybrid coming in as well. Remember Toyota and the Prius have been around forever and they have a lot of history when it comes to hybrid technology. So that may make this vehicle even more fun to drive. You'll have to wait till 2022 for one of those. When you add up all 10 categories, for this 2022 Toyota Corolla Cross, it earns a 84. Now we've only had a little bit of time together today, so if you have any additional questions, put them in the comments down below. I am more than happy to get you answers. A lot of times the dealers don't have them yet, especially as these vehicles start to roll into the dealers, and we'll start learning more and more as far as additional add-ons, more goodies, maybe a nightshade edition. That would be very cool. But all that'll be coming soon. You can put that in the comments below, and if you got value from this video, make sure to like it and share it and subscribe. Tell your friends. We are on all forms of social media with a lot of new product. You can find that at Lauren Fix and check out our website. We have other people that have reviewed this car at carcoachreports.com. It's in English and in Spanish. Check out our podcast, Total Car Score. It's on all platforms. If you're looking for more ways to save money, check out my book, Lauren Fix's Guide to Loving Your Car. The link is in the description and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.